In this video, we are going to be talking about the bite method, which Stephen Hassan has come up with, and he is an expert when it comes to cults and behavioral control, uh, brainwashing, all of that stuff. And John DeLynn has met with him. He's done interviews with him, and he went through the bite method uh, step by step, point by point, and compared it to the teachings of Latter-day Saints to see if Mormons do in fact fall under the bite method with its control uh, methods. And what it stands for is B is behavioral control, I is information control, T is thought control, and the E stands for emotional manipulation and control. So as we go point by point through this method, I wanted to use John DeLynn's method of breaking down every single point and placing the teachings of Mormonism in each category to see exactly what they control and how they fit into this method. So starting with the very first point, behavioral control. I'm going to put all of these points up on the screen so you can read them along with me. So green, if you see sentences in green, that means I don't think the Mormon church does this in modern times. If you see orange, it means I see this happening sometimes in the Mormon church, like on missions, but not as a general rule. But if you see the sentences and letters in red, this means this occurs regularly within the Mormon church. So let's jump in and start with behavioral control. Regulate individuals' physical reality. Dictate where, how, and with whom the member lives and associates or isolates. When, how, and with whom the member has sex. Control types of clothing and hairstyles. Regulate diet, food and drink, hunger and or fasting. Manipulation and deprivation of sleep financial exploitation, manipulation, or dependence, restrict leisure, entertainment, vacation time, major time spent with group indoctrination and rituals and or self-indoctrination, including the internet, permission required for major decisions. Thoughts, feelings, and activities of self and others reported to superiors. Rewards and punishments used to modify behaviors, both positive and negative. Discourage individualism. Encourage group think. Impose rigid rules and regulations. Punish disobedience by beating, torture, burning, cutting, rape, or tattooing slash branding. Threaten harm to family and friends. Force individual to rape or be raped. Instill dependency and obedience. Encourage and engage in corporal punishment. So as you can see, just in the behavioral control section, so much of that is read and we can see so many of those taught and followed within the LDS church. Information control. Deception. Deliberately withhold information, distort information to make it more acceptable, systematically lie to the cult member, minimize or discourage access to non-cult sources of information including internet, TV, radio, books, articles, newspapers, magazines, other media, critical information, former members, keep members busy so they don't have time to think and investigate, control through cell phone with texting, calls, internet tracking, compartmentalize information into outsider versus insider doctrines, ensure that information is not freely accessible, control information at different levels and missions within group, allow only leadership to decide who needs to know what and when. Encourage spying on other members. Impose a buddy system to monitor and control a member. Report deviant thoughts, feelings, and actions to leadership. Ensure that individual behavior is monitored by group. 
extensive use of cult-generated information and propaganda, including newsletters, magazines, journals, audio tapes, videotapes, YouTube, movies, and other media, misquoting statements or using them out of context from non-cult sources, unethical use of confession, information about sins used to disrupt and or dissolve identity boundaries, withholding forgiveness or absolution, manipulation of memory, possible false memories. So now as we get into the thought control, we see again a lot of red. Every single one of these categories, you can, as I read through them, as I hear them, I think of all these different scenarios and all these different categories and all these different manuals and articles and quotes that I have heard read. They're all over the place and they fall right under these categories. So as we move into thought control, you'll see just how much more we can absolutely see this throughout Mormonism. Require members to internalize the group's doctrine as truth, adopting the group's map of reality as reality, instill black and white thinking, decide between good versus evil, organize people into us versus them, insiders versus outsiders, change person's name and identity, Use of loaded language and cliches which constrict knowledge, stop critical thoughts, and reduce complexities into platitudinous buzzwords. Encourage only good and proper thoughts. Hypnotic techniques are used to alter mental states, undermine critical thinking, and even to age regress the member. Memories are manipulated and false memories are created. Teaching thought-stopping techniques which shut down reality testing by stopping negative thoughts and allowing only positive thoughts, including denial, rationalization, justification, wishful thinking, chanting, mediating, praying, speaking in tongues, singing or humming. Rejection of rational analysis, critical thinking, constructive criticism. Forbid critical questions about leader, doctrine, or policy allowed. Labeling alternative belief systems as illegitimate, evil, or not useful. Instill new map of reality. So now as we move into the emotional control, you'll see that almost every part of it is absolutely red, which means you see it throughout the teachings of the Latter-day Saints. Manipulate and narrow the range of feelings. Some emotion and or needs are deemed as evil, wrong, or selfish. Teach emotion-stopping techniques to block feelings of homesickness, anger, doubt. Make the person feel that problems are always their own fault, never the leader's or the group's fault. Promote feelings of guilt or unworthiness, such as identity guilt, you are not living up to your potential, your family is deficient, your past is suspect, your affiliations are unwise, your thoughts, feelings, actions are irrelevant or selfish, social guilt, historical guilt. Instill fear, such as fear of thinking independently, the outside world, enemies, losing one's salvation, leaving or being. Extremes of emotional highs and lows, love bombing and praise one moment and then declaring you are a horrible sinner. Ritualistic and sometimes public confession of sins. Phobia indoctrination. Inculcating irrational fears about leaving the group or questioning the leader's authority. No happiness or fulfillment possible outside of the group. Terrible consequences if you leave. Hell, demon possession, incurable diseases, accidents, suicide, insanity, 
10,000 reincarnations, etc. Shunning of those who leave, fear of being rejected by friends and family, never a legitimate reason to leave. Those who leave are weak, undisciplined, unspiritual, worldly, brainwashed by family or counselor, or seduced by money, sex, or rock and roll. Threats of harm to ex-member and family. So if you want a list of examples on how you find this within the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I have a link that I'm going to put in the description and I'll also post it in the comment section that you can click on. It's rationalrevelation.com and they go point by point through this entire concept and they show and give examples and quotes and scriptures and all kinds of stuff where you can see how the Latter-day Saints Church falls under almost each and every category with this method of control and thinking.
Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful to you. And I hope if it was new information for you that it was helpful and this will get you seeking and searching even more so that you can find answers and you can know exactly why you believe what you believe and you can have a better understanding of what the members of the Latter-day Saints Church belief. And my channel covers so many LDS topics from history, to current events, to scripture and doctrine, a whole bunch of everything. So I hope that if you have not already, you will go back and check out other videos here on my channel. And if you haven't subscribed and you're new to my channel, I encourage you to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one because I have plenty more to come. I have a long, never-ending list of videos to make, which is exciting. I have some really good ones um, coming up in the near future. So I hope that you'll join me again for those. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I just want to encourage you, if you are an active Mormon, if you are an ex-Mormon, if you are searching, if you don't, don't know what to believe and you're in a faith crisis, I want to encourage you to seek out biblical Christianity. I talk about biblical Christianity versus Mormonism in many videos, the contradictions and the completely different teachings in both belief systems. And I just encourage you to pick up your Bible and read. If you want to know what the biblical gospel is, read the New Testament, read the gospel of John, read the book of Romans, read Hebrews. They're very powerful books and they will show you what exactly biblical Christianity is and what the Jesus of the Bible teaches, unlike the Jesus of Mormonism or the gospel of Mormonism. Totally different. So reach out to me. I always post my email in the description and my Facebook page as well that I link to this YouTube channel. And I would love to hear from you. I hope that you are all truth seekers above all things. And I pray that each and every one of you will come into a relationship with Jesus Christ and you will find hope and freedom and peace that is found within biblical Christianity. And um, thanks so much for watching again. Have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in my next video.